I welcome everyone to this important service in Jesus' name. And I pray the Lord will bless your heart, will bless your soul, and bless everything you lay your hands upon in Jesus' name. And I pray that the word of God will not just pass over your shoulders, it will do something in your heart, something in your family. To bring a permanent change upwards in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for your people. Thank you for their faithfulness. Thank you for our coming here today for something good. And we pray, Lord, you do wonderfully well in every life in Jesus' name. We pray that your life, your word will transform our lives. Transform our families transform our church and move us forward in a practical way in Jesus name we thank you because we know you have answered in Jesus name we pray we're coming to James chapter 3 and I'm reading from verse 1 James chapter 3 reading from verse 1 my brethren be not many masters knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. For in many things we offend all. If any man offends not in words, the same is a perfect man, and able to bridle, able to control, able to put in check, able to put on authority the whole body and then in verse 6 and the tongue is a fire a world of iniquity so is the tongue among our members that it defileth the whole body and setteth on fire the whole body the cause of nature and a search on the fire of hell. In verse 10, out of the same mouth proceedeth blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. Verse 13, who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you. Let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. Verse 17, but the wisdom which is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. Chapter 3 of James is peculiar. The whole chapter is devoted to the tongue. And how serious, how important, how essential such a subject should be that the whole chapter of a New Testament book is devoted to the use or misuse of the tongue. Actually, from the whole Bible, coming from Genesis all through to Revelation, you'll find our tongues determine how happy we are in life, how useful we are to the Lord, how healthy we are in ourselves how spiritual we are all the spiritual experiences we claim being saved being sanctified and being filled with the holy ghost they are all shown or revealed or maybe contradicted by the use of the tongue it's the tongue that determines how rewardable we're going to be in eternity, how helpful we are here in life, how friendly we are in society. It's the tongue that determines how successful we are, how profitable we are, 
and how good and well remembered our lives will be after we have gone. And it's our tongue, on the other hand, that determines our sadness, that determines our rejection. You know, somebody says, I don't know why, they reject me everywhere. I turn here, they reject me. I turn there, they reject me. Check up on the use of the tongue. It's the tongue that determines our defeat in life, our loss in life, our failure in life, our suffering. The tongue determines our unanswered prayers, our self-destruction. We destroy ourselves with our tongue, and eventually the tongue determines our eternal ruin, our eternal damnation. Like a small hem, like a small steering, the steering wheel of a car, of a truck, of a lorry, the tongue drives us to our desirable destination or to a damned destiny. This morning, we're examining the Word of God together in James chapter 3, from verse 1 to the end, on determining our destinies with our tongue. Determining our destinies with our tongue. First Peter chapter 3, I read from verse 10. First Peter chapter 3, verse 10. For he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue. It says, you want a good life, a happy life, a prosperous life, a profitable life, a rewardable life. Check up on the tongue. Refrain his tongue from evil and his leaves that they speak no girl. Matthew chapter 12 I read from verse 33 Matthew chapter 12 reading from verse 33 the words of Jesus either make the tree good or its fruit good or else make the tree corrupt and its fruit corrupt for the tree is known by his fruit the tree is known, not by the noise the tree may make, not by the height of that tree, not by the leaves of that tree, by the fruit that that tree is bearing. You will know the nature of a kind of tree. O generation of vipers, how can ye, being evil, speak good things, for out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh what is secret. It says, the problem really is not originally at the, dust, at the doorstep of the tongue. The problem is at the heart. If the heart is happy, the tongue will talk happily. If the tongue is sad, the tongue will produce such words. If the tongue is depraved, if the heart is depraved, the tongue will utter things that are dirty and defiling and depraved. If the heart is cleansed, the tongue will utter words that are clean. If the heart is devilish, the tongue also will be devilish. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh a good man. Out of the tr good treasure of the heart, bringeth forth good things. And an evil man, evil at heart, out of the evil treasure in the heart, Bring it forth evil things, but I say unto you that every idle word, I remember, idle words come from idle hearts. They can't 
sheep, empty hearts, worthless hearts, the hearts that have not been touched or transformed by the blood of Christ has not experienced the salvation of the Lord because that heart is vain, because that heart is worthless, and because that heart is uh, not having anything good inside. What comes out is idle word, and it says that every idle word that men shall speak they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified. By thy words, how about that? Is the tongue that prays? Is the tongue that confesses? Is the tongue that, has, that shows confidence in Christ? I believe in Christ. It is a tongue that leads him to salvation. Is the tongue that comes to tell the Lord, I am of an unclean tongue. I dwell in the midst of people of unclean leaves. And it is the fire from the altar of God that touches that tongue and transforms that tongue. And so, as you think about it, the expression of the tongue, the face in the tongue, the confidence expressed by the tongue, eventually leads you to life because by thy words thou shalt be justified by thy words the tongue that says i'm all right although i'm not saved but i'm all right i'm not converted but i'm all right i have need of nothing i don't need the christ of calvary I don't need the salvation conversion coming from Calvary. It's the tongue that says, I can rule my life. I can lead my life. I can go my own way. And that kind of tongue misses salvation, misses conversion. And by thy words, thou shalt be condemned. Here on earth, our tongue determines how good our families will be. How prosperous the salesman will be. Our tongue determines how good a teacher is. Our tongue determines how good anyone in any field, in any profession is. And our tongue determines what we get out of life. And then on the other side of the grave, it's our tongue that determines what we're going to be on that other side of the grave, determining our destiny with our tongue. A step further, it's unfortunate. We determine other people's destiny with our tongue. The evangelist determines the destiny of sinners with his tongue. The pastor preacher determines the destiny of multitudes of people in the church with his tongue. The wife determines, the mother determines the destiny, the direction of the lives of the children with her tongue. And our leaders in the nation determine the direction of the nation and the destiny of the nation with the tongue we determine quite a lot with our tongue and such a little member the tongue ought to have our attention and to know what to do so that our tongue will lead in the right direction amen james chapter 3 determining our destinies with our tongue. Three things we're looking at. Look at verse 1. Verse 1, it says, My brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. Verse 2, for in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man. Talk about perfection. 
if any man offends not in word, that man, if any woman offends not in word, that woman, if a believer offends not in word, that believer is a perfect person and able to bridle the whole body. Point number one, the defining factor in the master's tongue. The defining factor in the master's tongue. It's talking about masters. And to be a master, all you need to do is to look at the master. He is the perfect one. He lived a perfect life. And the testimony was given about his tongue, about his speech. And what defined him, what identified him is the very fact that no man ever spake like this man. John chapter 7. I'm reading from verse 46. John chapter 7, verse 46. And the officers answered, Never man speak like this man. The defining factor in the life of the master that showed him higher above everyone that ever lived is that no man ever speak like this man. Be not many masters. Sit down. Rest and relax. Check up on the condition of your tongue. Look at Jesus Christ, the perfect master, and see the way he used his tongues. And then, as you go to him in prayer, and he touches your tongue, and he transforms his tongue, and he replaces your old tongue with his new tongue, then he'll put the word in your mouth, and now you can speak. The defining factor in a person that has the mastery, the defining factor in a person that is matured, the defining factor in a person that is moving forward, is the tongue. Point number one, the defining factor in the master's tongue. Number two, Look at verse 5. James chapter 5, chapter 3, verse 5. Even so, the tongue is a little member and boasteth great things. Behold, how great a matter a little fire kindles. And the tongue is a fire, a world of inequity. So is the tongue among our members that it defileth the whole body and setteth on fire the cause of nature and it is set on the fire of hell. Point number two, the devouring fire in the misused tongue. The devouring fire in the misused tongue. A tongue that is not under control, flippant, a tongue that is always wagging, always nagging, always talking, always moving. Think, talking without thinking. Talking without looking at the final result and the final outcome of what it says. And it spreads fire. It kindles fire. It burns down the family. It burns down a local church. It burns down a tribe. It burns down a profession. It burns down the office. It's the devouring fire in the misused tongue. Point number three. Look at verse 13. Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation his words with meekness of wisdom. Verse 17, but the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. 
the distinguishing fruits of ministering tongues. The fruit that sets us apart. The fruit that distinguishes us. The fruit that makes us distinct. The fruit that tells everybody he is different. She is different. Your tongue distinguishes you by the fruit you bear. It says you have the meekness of wisdom, and then you bear fruits by that tongue, the distinguishing fruits of ministering tongues. Point number one, the defining factor in the master's tongue. It tells us in chapter 3 of James, verse 1, my brethren, sage, my brethren, professing to know the Lord, my brethren, you are in the kingdom already. My brethren, you came into the kingdom by using your tongue to pray and to say that you're guilty, to say that you are condemned before the Lord. You used your tongue to say that your hope is in Christ, and now you are brought into the family of God. My brethren, be not many masters. Be not many masters. Sit back, watch the master. Before you can be a master, before you can be a teacher, before you can be a rabbi, before you can be a counselor, before you can be an advisor, sit back, hold on, and look at the perfect master, the perfect counselor, and the perfect teacher. Because if we go on to rush into counseling, advising, talking, doing whatever with our tongue, we shall receive the greater condemnation because in many things we offend all. In many things, check up your life. In many things, check up the history of your family and check up everyone that has had a problem that came to you and they said, my family is broken. If you check up and go to the final conclusion, it's their tongue that broke the family. Or the tongue of the in-laws that broke the family. Or the tongue of the husband that broke the family. Because in many things will faint all. Somebody is running away from work. Nobody accepts me at work. Nobody is looking at me. They don't give me promotion. What can I do, Pastor? Check up. The tongue at work. The tongue, the way we speak to our leaders, the high officers in the place of work, or the way we look down others and we condemn other people, criticize other people, check up on the tongue. In many things, we offend all, all of us, offend. We offend all. I check up the people who are preaching. I don't know, Pastor. I, I do all my best and I'm really zealous working for the Lord and I pray, I fast, I study, I read, I do everything. But you know what I discover? The church is jointly. They don't come. And then I come to church, I challenge them. And I talk to them and I said, if everybody is like you, there will be nobody saved. And then I try to tell them, I threaten them, I talk about hell, I talk about heaven. Pastor, they don't come. They don't love God. Check up. Maybe it's your tongue after all. For in many things, we offend all. They are avoiding me. I thought Jesus said, love each other. And as I, you know, I try to mix with them. If they smile at me the first day, the second day, by the end of one week, everybody is touching me. Everybody is running away from me. Check up. They just discovered the tongue you brought into that fellowship was a razor blade and it cuts without mercy for many things we offend all if any man offends not in words that's a master that's a master 
That's what we're looking up to. If anyone offends not a word, the same is a perfect man. That's our master. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. He gave us the example. And he's able also to bride up the whole body. Behold, we put beads in horses' mouths that they may obey us. And we turn about their whole body. The words of the Lord of the Father was like the controlling guide and guide in the mouth of the master. I say nothing except what the Father has taught me. Behold also the sheep which though they be so great and are driven of fierce winds, yet and they turned about with a very small aim. Do you see the master there? And Lord Jesus Christ was in the ship. And it was storming. And it was here and there. And the waters were coming into the boat. And the disciples came up and they said, Master, Master, save us or we perish. And with that little help. And with that tongue, he rose up and said, Peace be still. And there was a calm. The tongue of faith can bring calmness into your life. Calmness into your family. Calmness into your trouble sea. You know, if you don't know how to use the tongue like the master did, there will be many troubles in life. And many waves and many storms over your sheep. But it says, well, that's most him. He leads that sheep, whithersoever the governor listeth. And we're to be like the master. Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10. I'm reading from verse 24. Matthew chapter 10. Reading from verse 24. The disciple is not above his master nor the servant above his lord we call him master we say right we call him lord we say right learn of him see how he use the tongue and be a master yourself and make sure that before you speak anything the grace of god has touched your heart has transformed your heart and the grace of god is teaching you what to say, what not to say. And you're asking yourself, if Jesus, my Lord, my master, why in this situation, this condition, what will he say? Look at verse 25. It is enough that the disciple be as his master and the servant as his Lord. What then was that defining factor? in the master's tongue that we may learn that we may know and that we may pray and follow through and speak like he spoke and talk like he talked and use the tongue like he used the tongue isaiah chapter 50 i'm reading from verse 7 isaiah chapter 50 let's go back to verse 4 isaiah chapter 6 50 verse 4 the Lord God has given me the tongue of the learned. Given me. Go to the Lord. Let him give you. The way I speak, I don't know why. Maybe that's just my nature. I realize that's the way my father used to speak. And of course, you know the problem he brought on the family when you were very young. The way I speak, I think I got it from my mother. But you understand, you remember what kind of problem brought on the family and on the children because of the tongue of what you are saying. Maybe that's my nature when I was in school, when I was young. That's what I used to speak. But you are now converted. As you are born again and converted, and you are a real child of God, and now things ought to be different. Because if any man, if any woman, if any child, if anyone be in Christ, he is a new creature. 
old things, the old tongue ought to vanish away, pass away. The old corrosive, acidic, poisonous, evil words ought to vanish away. And behold, all things ought to become new. We need to go to God so he can give each of us a tongue of the lineage, a person that learns the way to go and the way to talk and the way to bless other people with the tongue. Look at that verse 4. The Lord God has given me. He'll give it to you. Let me hear a good amen. amen. Has given me the tongue of the lineage that I should know how to speak a word in season to him that is weary, to him that is sad, to him that is tired, to him that is worn out. Everyone needs the tongue that the Lord will give, the tongue of the master, the tongue, the kind of tongue that Jesus had, so we'll know how to speak a word, right word, good word, encouraging word, uplifting word, in ceasing to him that is weary. He wakeneth morning by morning. He wakeneth my ear to hear as the lineage. The Lord God has opened my ear. You see that? We need to go to the Lord, that the Lord will open our ears, our hearts, our mind. And I was not rebellious, neither turned away backward. I was, I gave my back to the smiters, that's talking about Christ, and my cheeks to them that plucked up the air, talking about our master. I hid not my face from shame and speeching, for the Lord God will help me. He will help you to know how to talk, to know what to say, to know when not to say it, to know the appropriate time, and to let your words, your talk, have a positive impact on the people you speak to. The Lord will help me. He will help you. Therefore shall I not be confounded. Therefore have I set my face like a flint. I know and I know that I shall not be ashamed. I know. I know. I will not be ashamed. The words you speak will not make you ashamed. Your tongue will not make you ashamed. You'll not say something and say, I wish I didn't say that. I wish I didn't tell that dirty joke. I wish I didn't uh, say that thing to that child. Then you become ashamed. I wish I was not concerned. I was not, um, I was not involved with that kind of slander. I wish I didn't voice out that thing. Then it brings shame. And the Lord will protect you from shame in Jesus' name. Luke chapter 4. Verse 22. Luke chapter 4, reading from verse 22. And all bear him witness and wondered at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. That's the master. They wondered at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. But you understand, it's because he had a good heart. So he had good words. He had a gracious heart. He had gracious words. He had a refined heart. And so he had refined words. He had a happy heart. And so he had happy words. And he had a loving heart. 
And because of that, they had loving words. Colossians chapter 4. In Colossians chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 6. We've read about the master. And the master had gracious words. And now that we are following the master, and we're living like the master, and we're being, we've come back to Calvary, and he has touched our hearts afresh. And because of that, he has touched our tongues afresh. See what happens. Colossians chapter 4, verse 6. Let your speech be always with grace. Always with grace. You remember Christ? Full of grace and full of truth. And so they wondered at the gracious words coming out of his mouth. He says, let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that she may know how ye ought to answer every man. Have you ever thought about that? That to speak gracious words, our hearts must be full of the grace of God. Thank God, if he has not done it yet, he will do it. Proverbs chapter 31. Proverbs chapter 31. I read from verse 8. Proverbs 31, verse 8. Open thy mouth for the dumb in the cause of all such as are pointed to destruction. The dumb, those who cannot speak for themselves. The helpless, the hopeless, the people who do not know their way out of their problems. Don't create problems for the people that are hopeless and helpless. Think through and say, how will Christ get this man, this woman, this sinner, this member, this believer, out of the predicament he finds himself or she finds herself. The Lord will speak either in prayer or will speak to them in counseling to bring them out. And it says, open thy mouth for the dumb. In the cause of all such as are pointed to destruction. Verse 9, Open thy mouth, judge righteously. Let righteousness be at the background, be at the root, and be at the bottom, the support of what you say, and plead the cause of the poor and the needy. And you know, Jesus Christ also knew when not to talk. He had knowledge all the time. He knew the subject. He knew the people. He knew the Father's will. He knew history. He knew everything going on in his own time. But he didn't always speak. And the Lord is telling us there are times to be quiet. There are times to say nothing. When you know you cannot do good by what you want to say. Isaiah chapter 53, I'm reading from verse 7. Isaiah chapter 53, verse 7. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. Some people cannot bear a little bit of pain. A little bit of suffering. And suffering sets their tongue moving. Pain sets their tongue moving. And pressure, injustice. If injustice is done against them, or the injustice is against their community, that injustice, they say, I must talk. Not always wise, he was oppressed, a master. And if you're going to have the tongue of the master, you will know when to keep quiet. 
he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep before, her shearers is dumb. So he openeth not his mouth. First Peter, in doing that, he has left an example for you and for me, for us all together. First Peter, chapter 2. Verse 21, for ye even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example, an example of suffering persecution, suffering pressure, suffering injustice, suffering, suffering from the lies of the people, and suffering from all the evil intention. He says, he has given us an example that we should follow in his steps. Who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. Who when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not. Was uh, master, lord, king, he had power. He could call down legions of angels to scatter his enemies. You know, some people, if they think they have power, they have authority, and they can do and undo, and nobody is going to question them or challenge them, they give themselves the ultimate, final authority to oppress the helpless. There are people like that. But Jesus Christ will not threaten. When he suffered, he threatened not. But he committed himself to him that judges righteously. I pray that same virtue the Lord will give unto us. That same gracious attitude and gracious word the Lord will give to every one of us in Jesus' name. Revelation chapter 14. In Revelation chapter 14, reading from verse 4, These are they which were not defiled with women, believers, for they are virgins. These are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. Believers, followers of Christ. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb. Verse 5. And in their mouth was found no girl, no lies. No deception, no hypocrisy. In their mouth was found no guile, and they are without fault before the throne of God. The Lord reproduce that in every life in Jesus' name. Point number two the devouring fire. In the misused tongue. We're coming to chapter 3 of James, verse 5, verse 6. Even so, the tongue is a little member and boasted great things. Behold, how great a matter, a little fire kindled. A little fire of argument in the family. A little fire of disagreement with your boss. A little fire of dispute in the boss. No, that's not the amount I should receive. That's what I gave to you. I must have this back. This is all you have. What did you give me? How much did you give me? That little fire of debate can bring a whole life down. And they begin to fight and they stab each other. The tongue, verse 6, 
is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members that it defiles the whole body. You know what that is saying? No matter your gifts, your sharp sighted, you can see. No matter your gifts, you hear something and you can repeat that thing verbatim. You have a sharp brain, memory. And no matter how fast you can walk, you want to get there, your feet are swift in running there. No matter how skillful you are, or skilled you are, your hands very skillful. And no matter how strong your bone, your backbone can carry any weight, your whole body, the success of the defeat depends on that little member on your tongue. And so if you practice and strengthen your legs, your feet, you practice and you make your hands skillful, and you practice and you make your eyes very sharp, your visionary, and every part of your body is all right, except your tongue, look at this, it sets on fire. The cause of nature, and it is set on the fire of hell. Would you remember that the tongues of people brought the fiery judgment of God upon them? We're looking at Numbers chapter 16. Numbers chapter 16, I'm reading from verse 1. Numbers chapter 16, we're reading from verse 1. Now Korah, the son of Ezer, the son of Kohath, the son of Levi, and Dathan and Abiram, the sons of Eliab, and On, the son of Peleth, sons of Reuben, took men. And they rose up before Moses was certain of the children of Israel, 250 princes in the assembly. Men of note, men of weight, men of authority, men of respect, 250 princes of the assembly famous in the congregation, men of renown. And he gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron and said unto them, Ye take too much upon you, seeing all the congregation are holy, every one of them, and the Lord is among them. Wherefore then lift ye up yourselves above the congregation of the Lord. It's a long story. You can read the whole chapter and get back home, but let me show you the conclusion. We're looking at verse 35. Verse 35. Verse 35. And there came out a fire from the Lord and consumed the 250 men that offered incense. Men of power. Men of position, men of authority, their tongue attracted the judgment of God, the judgment of fire. We're looking at Numbers chapter 21. Numbers chapter 21. I'm reading from verse 4. Numbers chapter 21, verse 4. And they journeyed from Mount Hall by the way of the Red Sea to compass the land of Edom. And the soul of the people was much discouraged because of the way. And the people spake against God and against Moses. Discouragement sometimes will set the tongue moving, but in the right direction. 
said the tongue nagging, the tongue wagging. They have something to complain about. They have something to murmur about. The discouragement, the tiredness, the sadness. We're not enjoying the movement. The road is raw. The hill is steep. How can we go this direction? And then they spoke against God and against Moses. Then he goes on to say in verse 6, And the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they beat the people, and much people of Israel died. Much people of Israel died. Many of them in their thousands because of the wrong use of the tongue. That's what happened to them. I say, chapter 33, reading from verse 12. I say, chapter 33, verse 12. It says in verse 12, I say, chapter 33, verse 12. And the people shall be as the bonies of lime, and thus cut up shall they be burnt in the fire. Why? Here, ye that are far off, what I have done, and ye that are near, acknowledge my might. The sinners in Zion are afraid. Fearfulness. I surprise the hypocrites who among us shall dwell with the devouring fire, who among us shall dwell with everlasting bodies. The problem of the tongue. The Lord preserve us from fiery judgment in Jesus' name. The Lord preserve your family. The Lord preserve my family. The Lord preserve your local church. The Lord preserve our headquarters church. The Lord preserve the whole of deep and life from all these wagging tongues in Jesus' name. James chapter 3, I read from verse 9. James chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 9. It says in verse 9, There we will bless God, even the Father, and there we cause we may. You see what he's saying here? Uh, he's talking about tongues that on the one hand you're praising God during the service, blessing God during the service, and the moment they go out of the doors of the church, they're cursing. They're angry. They're fighting. And I say some things that you say, this is the opposite of what you are saying now when you are in the church. Have you found people who preach sound doctrine, good words, nice words, while we're in the church? As they go out of the church, somebody offends them, and they curse, and they're angry, and they're bitter. It says, their ways will bless God, even the Father. Their ways will curse me, which are made in the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceeded blessing and cursing. Would you remember Nebuchadnezzar in Daniel chapter 2? He said, There is no God like your God. Who can reveal secrets and then he was so excited about daniel and about the god of daniel he promoted daniel and promoted shedak meshach and abednego chapter 2 of daniel chapter 3 from the first verse he raised up an idol and he said everybody shall worship he had about shedak meshach and abednego who will not worship the person who exalted God in chapter 2, end of chapter 2, now in chapter 3 said, if you hear the music and you refuse to fall down, who is that God that will deliver you out of my hand? 
You see that? Blessing God, chapter 2, and cursing men, chapter 3. There are people like Nebuchadnezzar. They seem to honor God this minute, and the very next minute, they are cursing men. Out of the same mouth proceedeth blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. Does a fountain send forth at the same place sweet water and bitter? Can the fig tree, my brethren, bear only berries? Either the divine figs, so can no fountain, but yield salt, water, and fresh. It's talking about the people that you know talk from two sides of their mouth and they say different things sweet, bitter, bitter, sweet, and then they get confused. They put bitter for sweet and they put sweet for bitter. Isaiah chapter 5. Isaiah chapter 5. We're reading from verse 20. Isaiah chapter 5, verse 20. One to them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. They talk sweet, they talk bitter, they talk blessing, they call the talk cursing, they talk joy, they talk laughter, they talk good, they talk evil, and it says woe to them, look at verse 24, therefore because of that double mindedness and because of that double tongue, you cannot predict, they say something good now, don't be too excited. Hold on, hold on. Wait. They might now say something not bitter. And because of that duplicity, look at the result. Therefore, as the fire devoureth stubble, the stubble, and the flame consumes the chaff, so their root shall be as rottenness, and their blossom shall go up as dust. Because they have cast away the law of the Lord of hosts and despised the word of the Holy One of Israel. Let's come back to James chapter 3. James chapter 3. I'm reading now from verse 14. But if ye are bitter, envying, and strive in your hearts, remember, the tongue is connected to the heart. If there's bitter, envying in the heart, the mouth will express it. If there is strife in the heart, remember, the tongue will come out or strive, glory not, lie not against the truth. This wisdom descended not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. For where envy and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. Where there is envy, don't say there's salvation. Where there is strife, don't say there is salvation. And where there is fleshly heart, worldly heart, and where there's sensuality, defilement, don't say there is salvation. And where there is devilishness, somebody is devilish, is always thinking out something. Is a genius in thinking out something devilish, and his tongue, without any preparation, will just roll it out. Devilish things. Don't say there's salvation there, because it says where envy and strife is, there'll be confusion, 
there will be every evil work. You remember what I say? You remember this point? The devouring fire in misused tongues where there is envy, fire eventually, fire of judgment will come. Look at Isaiah chapter 26. I'm reading from verse 11. Isaiah chapter 26, verse 11. Lord, when thy hand is lifted up, they will see, they will not see, but they shall see and be afraid. Look at this for their envy, for their envy at the people. Yea, the fire of thine enemies shall devour them. Envy and the fire, devouring and fire. And James also talks about strife, strife. Where envy and strife is, there's every evil work. Proverbs chapter 26, where there is strife, don't profess salvation. Proverbs chapter 26, reading from verse 20, where there is no wood, the fire goes out. So, where there is no tail bearer, strive ceases as coals are to burning, are to burning coals and wood to fire. So is a contentious man to kindle strife. Envy, fire. Strive, fire. And you know, James chapter 3 also talks about that kind of wisdom is earthly, it's not heavenly, earthly. Philippians chapter 3. In Philippians chapter 3, verses 18 and 19, for many walk, of whom I have told you often, and I'll tell you even weeping that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, whose glory is in their shame. Look at this, who mind earthly things, earthly things. They are enemies of God, their God is their belly. And those enemies, they show because they are earthly. They don't think about heaven. All their consideration is about things here on earth. What happens to them eventually? Psalm 97, reading from verse 3. Psalm 97, verse 3. A fire goes out before him and burns up his enemies round about. It also talks about those who are sensual, those who are carnal, those who are fleshly, those who are adulterous, and those who commit the sins of the flesh. What happens to them? Jude chapter 1, and I'm reading from verse 15. Jude chapter 1, reading from verse 15, to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all the ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These are murmurers complainers walking after their own lusts and their mouth speaketh their mouth speaketh their mouth we're talking about their tongue their mouth speaketh great swelling words have immense persons in admiration because of advantage verse 19 these be they who separate themselves Tell me the next word there. Tell me the next word.
tell me out aloud. Sensual, having not the spirit. What's their end? Look at verse 7. In verse 7, even as Sodom and Gomorrah, sensual, and the cities round about in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. It's telling us that as you look at the whole passage, and it talks about the people that misuse their tongues, whether they're sensual, or they're earthly, or they have strife, or they have envy, that the end result is eternal fire. And it talks about them finally as devilish. It says, this wisdom is earthly. This wisdom is sensual. This wisdom is devilish. What's the end of that? Revelation chapter 20 verse 10. The wisdom is devilish. Chapter 20 of Revelation verse 10. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Verse 15, and whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. I will not go there. I said, I will not go there. Your tongue will determine your destiny. We'll come to point number three. The distinguishing fruits of ministering tongues. These are people that know that the tongue matters. In everything we say, everything we do, that even the idle words, the vain words, the careless words, the slanderous words, and the words that cause strife and fighting will have the punishment of fire on the final day. And even before the final day will burn off their works, the works of their hand, even now at this present time. And because of that, they go to Calvary. And they allow the fire of purging and the fire of cleansing and the fire of refining to touch their tongues. And now wisdom from above is given unto them. And they speak with the wisdom of Christ. And their lives are turned around. Like my life will be turned around today. Your lives will be turned around in Jesus' name. James chapter 3, I read from verse 13. Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him show, let him reveal, let him demonstrate, let him give us the evidence out of a good conversation. His works with meekness of wisdom. Conversation, talk, interaction, speaking to that fellow, speaking to that brother, speaking to that sister, speaking to that friend, speaking to your husband, speaking to your wife. Remember, the heart, the heart. If you love somebody, the language will come out with love, out of the abundance of the heart, the most speaker. If you are wise on the inside, your tongue will reveal out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. Verse 17, but the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality without hypocrisy 
and the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. Divine wisdom affects and influences our hearts the way we speak. That divine wisdom will speak to the sinner and lead him to repentance, will speak to the backslider and lead him to restoration, will speak to the believer and lead him to consecration. You speak with wisdom. You will lead souls to Christ. Great will be your reward here on earth and in eternity in Jesus' name. Psalm 37. Psalm 37, reading from the statue. The mouth of the righteous speaketh wisdom. The salvation. The mouth of the righteous speaketh wisdom. The sanctification. The mouth of the righteous speaketh wisdom. Somebody is saturated with the word of God. And the word of God has come to his life to cleanse his life. And he is righteous. Somebody is just coming out of the church. And he had the word of God. After hearing the word of God, he went to God in prayer. And something happened and God gave him a wisdom from above. The mouth of that righteous person get him back home or in the bus or in the car or on the road. The mouth of the righteous speaketh wisdom and his tongue talketh of judgment. The law of his God is in his heart. Remember the heart and the tongue? If the law of the Lord is in his heart, it will affect his tongue. The law of his God is in his heart and none of his steps shall slide. I'm talking about somebody there. You will not slide. You will not backslide. This wisdom from above will be yours in Jesus' name. Proverbs chapter 31. Proverbs chapter 31 verse 26. She opens her mouth with wisdom. That's a virtuous woman. Sage, righteous. That's a good wife. That's a good mother. That's a good aged woman in the church. Teaching other women the things that are good. Helping other women to draw near to God, to love their husbands, to love their children, and to be a blessing to people in the community. She opens her mouth with wisdom. In her tongue is the law of kindness. He has a covenant with her tongue. He has a law, a principle on her tongue. If that is not a kind word, I won't say that to my husband. If that is not going to reveal me as a kind mother, I won't say that to my child. If that is not going to convince that sister I'm kind to her, I love her, I appreciate her, I sympathize with her in her condition, I'm not going to say the word. There's a law. He has a law of kindness in her mouth. Verse 31. Give her the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. We're looking at Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. I read from verse 28. Ephesians chapter 4. Wisdom. And the tongue that speaks the words of wisdom. The words that help not to hurt. The words that heal not to endanger. The words that encourage. The words that lift up not to discourage, not to beat down. 
the words that makes a person happy, holy, righteous, healthy, not words that, that act like acid. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of a divine, that it may minister grace to the hearers. Minister grace to the hearers. I pray your words will minister grace. Job chapter 16. I'm reading from verse 4. Job chapter 16. Reading from verse 4. I also could speak as she do. Here is Job. He came. He was sick. He was already suffering. And his suffering, they had never seen anything like this before. They claimed to be his friends. And they heaped words of condemnation, of criticism. They saw nothing good in Job. God saw something good in him. Even Satan saw something good and said, you made a hedge around him. But these friends came, they condemned Job altogether. And Job said, you know what? I could speak as ye do. If your soul were in my soul's stage, I could heap up words against you and shake my head at you. Verse 5, but I won't do that. I'm kind. But I won't say such words you are saying to me. I won't say that to you. If you were in my condition and I saw you in this condition, I'll take a different road. I'll act in a different way. I'll be an encouragement. I'll lift up your faith. I will move you towards God. But I will strengthen you with my mouth. And the moving of my leaves shall assuage your grief. You see, they were not doing right. And Job said, stop talking to me. Even your talk is bringing more pressure and more pain and more discomfort unto me. If I were in your situation and you were in my situation, I'll talk different. Psalm 119. Psalm 119. Verse 171. 119. 171. My leaves shall utter praise when thou hast taught me thy statutes. I come to the sanctuary. I learn from the word of God the statutes of the Lord. And then my tongue will utter praise. Proverbs chapter 25. Proverbs chapter 25. Reading from verse 15, Proverbs 25, verse 15. By long forbearing is a prince persuaded, and a soft tongue, a soft tongue, not harsh, not brutal, not cruel, not cutting, not acidic. A soft tongue breaks the bone. I pray the Lord will do it in our lives. Isaiah chapter 6. Isaiah chapter 6. Reading from verse 5. Isaiah chapter 6 verse 5. Then said I, Who is me? Here is Isaiah, the prophet of God. A minister of God. And here you are, a believer. I minister to. And the Lord wants us to act with humility, like I said. And check up how we've been using our tongue. And what has been the fruit of our tongue. 
What has been the deciding factor, the defining factor in our talk? If we have got the mastery, or if it has been devouring fire, we're threatening people with our tongue, we're cruel with our tongue, we're deceitful with our tongue, and we make fire to burn down, burn down the work, the company of other people with our tongue. I say I was sincere. He came to the Lord. He wouldn't hide anything. Then said I, who is me? I am undone because I am a man of unclean leaves. And I dwell in the midst of the people of unclean leaves. For mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me. I mean, a light coal in his hand, which he had taken with tongues from off the altar and laid it on my mouth. I pray the fire of the Holy Ghost will burn out every unclean thing from every mouth this morning in Jesus' name. And said, Lo, this has touched thy lips. And thine iniquity is taken away, and thy sin is purged. This is sanctification experience. He had known the Lord before this time. He had even been speaking for the Lord before this time. But now he came to the Lord for another touch, a definite touch. And the cold of fire from the altar got touched. He sleeps. He can do it for every one of us this morning. And after that is done, there was the witness of the Holy Spirit. And the angel bearing witness, this has touched thy leaves. You are cleansed, you are purged. Also, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? Then said I, here am I, send me. Everybody, then said I, here am I, send me. Once again, say from the depth of your heart, say it with a cleansed tongue. The work of God will prosper in your hands in Jesus' name. Let's really pray this morning. Go to the Lord in prayer now. Rise up and let us pray. And take all this that we have learned. Take everything to the Lord in prayer. Check up your mouth, your tongue, your lips, your words. Your conversation in the family, with your friends, with your neighbors, with co-workers, in the market, on the table, at table, when you're eating, what do you chew, what do you talk, do you slander, do you criticize, do you insult? Do you tear church members, ministers in pieces? Is your tongue unclean, not under control? Tongue dirty, defiling, telling dirty jokes? Deceitful, lying, corrosive, destructive. What kind of tongue do you have? Do you bless and curse, lift up and pull down, help and hinder? You draw near, drive away. 
What kind of tongue do you have? Does your tongue drive people away? Or does your tongue draw them into the grace of God? How do you use your tongue? Come to the altar this morning. Let the coal of fire that the Holy Ghost touch your mouth, touch your mind, touch your heart, touch your inner life, change your language. Then will the ministry of the word prosper in your mouth. 